Welcome to Worship with Messiah Online. We're glad you're with us today. Just a few announcements before we get started. City of Hope, City of Hope will be hosting a blood drive on Wednesday, June 14 from 10 to 3 p.m. in our Joy Center. If you'd like to give blood, having an appointment there is recommended. Um, Living Vine will start their summer study on Thursday, June 22 at 9.30 a.m. Keep an eye out for that. And our guest pastor today is Reverend Scotty Lloyd. Pastor Scotty is a retired ELCA pastor and army chaplain who spent 40 years serving around the world with the gospel. His last parish was in San Bernardino, California. He continues to supply preach throughout Southern California. He is married with two sons and two grandchildren. He currently resides in Fallbrook, California, where he spends his time, spends his time caring for numerous fruit trees and a vegetable garden. Pastor Scotty is on the board of directors for Lutheran Social Services of Southern California, and he is the president of the United States Army Chaplain Corps Regimental Association, a professional group supporting the Army Chaplain Corps. He enjoys many pastimes, including archaeology. He is a trained excavator who has worked in San Diego County and Mongolia, among other places. We're glad to have him here with us today. Now let's sing our gathering hymn. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out. the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way, cause he hung upon that cross, and he rose up from that grave, my God still rolling stones away, there's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Shout out your praise, let joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, let joy in the house of the Lord. Let joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, let joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in Shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. 
And let's pray. Lord God, you are our creator and provider. You are the source of our life, of all that we have. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bring healing to this wounded, broken world and raise us up to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. We have two scripture readings today. The first is from Hosea chapters 5 and 6, beginning at chapter 5, verse 15. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will beg my favor. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He has struck down and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up 
that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His appearance is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth. And my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 9, beginning at the ninth verse. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collection station. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And now, our message for today from Pastor Scotty. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get cut in, Dad would say. You got to get cut in, son. You need to, it's usually when I would need to focus better or work harder or do more and show greater strength in order to be successful with something. But that was his famous phrase, get cut in. And it was really his way of saying, get it right. Later in life, I would hear people say, in addition to that, just do more with less. Really? Work harder. Spend more time. Get more focused. Just do more, more, more. And of course, with less energy, less time, and less resources. I don't know about you, and I hope you don't mind, but frankly, I just feel, when I hear that, I feel screwed. We all want to get it right in life. We want to get it right in how we look and how we act. We want to get it right at work and play and school. We want good grades, advancement, prestige, advancement. Oh, but most of all, we want to get it right in our relationships, certainly with God and with each other. Yet, hard as we try, getting it right can elude us until God offers a new way. Jesus comes not for sinners, or comes for sinners, and not saints. And he gets it right so we can live right. This is the heart of our scripture readings today, starting with the prophet Hosea. The Jewish nation wanted to get it right with God and their neighbors. When threatened by enemies and challenges, they resorted to doubling down on rituals and animal sacrifices rather than relying on the Lord's direction. They played the world's game of performance, religion, and alliances with their powerful neighbor, Assyria. The people tried to check the blocks on an age-old list of emergency actions to get it right in the game of Middle Eastern thrones and kingdoms. Their trust was in the world's political playbook and not in the God who called them to be God's people. The prophet Hosea took them or told them 
that God offered them another chance to come home to their Savior with sincere hearts through confession. Repentance was the key. Hear what the prophet speaks in God's message to Israel and for us today. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he, has, for he who has torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. We in Christianity have taken that text and understood that, that that's referring to our Savior Jesus who on the third day rose from the dead for us. And then he concludes with those words that we hear the echoing of in our gospel reading in Matthew. For I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. America today is no different than Israel of old. We are beset by budgets and wars, human migrations and climate change, political and societal separations. In place of political parties and partisan patriotism, God offers an unfailing love in Jesus Christ that unites people across divisions with acceptance, respect, and a desire to understand before being understood as a new process of peace among our warring factions and philosophies. It begins with gratitude for God reaching out to us. The psalmist echoes this same plea for a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Literally, we are to offer self, not stuff, our committed hearts of love, for our Creator and Redeemer. God gave deliverance at the cross and resurrection of Jesus for us. And we celebrate that. Every time we gather around the Lord's table for Holy Communion, we're celebrating that. The psalmist concludes in Psalm 50, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. That is good news. Our gospel reading where Jesus calls Matthew as an apostle illustrates this mercy of God for penitent hearts. Matthew wants to get it right in life. He's no different than we are. He wants the good life. It's, well, based on how the world defines it. As a tax collector for Rome, he gains wealth, power, and protection from his nation's conquerors. The cost for this process of prestige is being an outcast and traitor among his people, and defined as sin incarnate, sin in the flesh, by all the religious authorities. He is alone. He's got it right. And he has all by ruling society's standards. But he's feared and hated and unaccepted by both Jew and Roman. He has it all and possesses nothing of real consequence. Perhaps it is this dilemma, tearing him apart, that reveals to himself his sinful state. And the good news of this rabbi Jesus who forgives sins, even tax collectors. I can't explain it any other way. Why Matthew would drop everything and just follow Jesus, which is what the text says. This is more than a whim. This is more than curiosity. This is a heart longing for something more important. Love, forgiveness, acceptance. Jesus does not disappoint Matthew or his sinful friends. Sharing a meal with someone then and now 
is an opportunity for close binding and bonding between people. Jesus attends, eats, identifies with sinners, and by the way, accepts the same criticism from society for mingling with such folks. In this meal, Jesus demonstrates and lavishly offers a new life that gets it right now and for eternity. Jesus reminds the Pharisees, and again, us. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So Paul explained this for us in his letter to the Romans. Using Abraham's story of faith, Paul says, for the promise that he would inherit, that's Abraham, would inherit the world, did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And again, for this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, and that includes you and me, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. Grace is getting a good life when you don't deserve it. Grace is lavish love that Jesus accomplished on the cross and resurrection for us. Grace is forgiveness when we strive to get it right, unfortunately, in all the wrong ways and places. Grace is, well, let me conclude with a modern day story of grace that has always helped me to have a heart focused on my Savior Jesus and his loving forgiveness in getting it right. In Minneapolis, St. Paul, and by the way, I, I can tell this story. I uh, had the opportunity uh, at a time to get some training as a rehab treatment facility chaplain uh, as a part of my uh, time as a U.S. Army chaplain. And went to Minneapolis and uh, went, heard this young man share this story. He was a boy who got into the proverbial liquor closet at home when his parents weren't there. Drank a little bit, got a buzz, and so it began. By age 19, he was well beyond alcohol and other drugs into what we call free base uh, cocktails, where you mix all kinds of things together and see what kind of a buzz you get. Maybe you live, maybe you die. This young man was in deep trouble and close to death. In fact, he had at one time collapsed and they used those paddles on you, you know, and shock you back to life. You would think that would change things, but it didn't. It actually took a second incident like that where he literally collapsed on the uh, sidewalk of St. Paul, Minnesota, and they put the pads on him, shocked him back to life. And he said, the next thing I remember, I'm in the hospital. I'm strapped down, tubes in my mouth, and I am totally immobilized except for my eyes. I can move my eyes. And what did I see? I saw my parents kneeling beside my hospital bed in the posture of prayer and falling asleep, I had fallen asleep. And on the right side of my bed was my girlfriend. I can't even imagine a girl falling for a guy like this, but it happens. And she is also kneeling in the posture of prayer on the other side of the bed and has fallen asleep. And he overhears one nurse say to the other, can you imagine? These people have been here all night praying for this guy. He ain't worth it. And they walked away not knowing that he was conscious. 
And he said, I wanted to scream out, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But he said, I couldn't. I couldn't make a sound. I couldn't move. All I could do was cry. And he said, at that moment, I felt something like warm salt water just flowing over my body. And it was grace. Grace flowing over me. Through my girlfriend, through my parents, through God. He said it was the first time I ever experienced grace. Well, you would think after an incident like that, this guy is going to definitely go through rehab. Well, he'd been through rehab 10 times before and successful every time. He had a certificate on the wall of his apartment. And, of course, after this incident, he went back into rehab again. And again, he was successful, got a certificate, it was on the wall. In fact, he was considered the honor student. But two days after being released back in his apartment, he, all he can think of is, where can I get a drink? Where can I get a shot? But he keeps getting a phone call from a friend who is on the wagon now and saying, why don't you come with me to an AA meeting? Oh, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And he's back and forth. Finally, he realizes this guy's never going to let up on him. So he decides, okay, he finds out where to go. And it's fortunately just three blocks away from one of his favorite bars. So he said, okay, I'll go with you. Now, he's thinking, of course, there's a small congregation somewhere near the church basement, maybe six or seven people, and it'll be quick and easy, and then off to the bar afterwards you'll go. He's got a plan. He gets there only to find out that, no, it's a regional gathering. There are 500 people like him, and he can't get out of the crowd. They just kind of shove him in. And the only seat available is right in the middle of the gym. Well, he said, I'm sweating profusely. I'm dying piece by piece inside, but I just want to get it over with and get that flippin' drink. So, they go through the ceremonies, and finally at the very end, and if you know anything about Alcoholics Anonymous, you know that there's a, uh, when they gather together regionally, they'll do this sometimes. They have everybody stand up. And then they'll say, anybody with 35 years or more of sobriety, please sit down. And then they'll work their way down. Well, he's been sober for two and a half days. So they work their way down 30 years, 20 years, five years, one year, six months. And now there are only two people standing, he and one other guy. And he said, I'm dying. Because one thing you know in rehab treatment is that you can't lie to another addict. They got you. They know. They've been there. They've done that. They know all the lies. And they're all staring directly at him. Because finally, when they hit two weeks, the other guy sits down. So now he's the only one in this vast sea of eyes of truth staring at him intently. And now even the folks running the uh, event are wondering, oh my goodness. Six days, five days, four days. And he said, I'm, 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 I'm barely able to stand, he said. And finally they hit two days and he collapses. He didn't sit, he just falls into the chair, a heap of sweat. And suddenly, 499 other people rise up and cheer for him. He concluded by saying that was the second time I felt the grace of God. 
And then he said, I've been sober for five years, six months, 18 days. He had it right down to the minute. And we all jumped up and cheered him. That is grace. You want to get it right in life? Well, quit working so hard at it. <laughs> Let the Pentecost Holy Spirit work with your heart and follow Jesus. Your change will result in joyous service to others, and you'll have it right and have all that really matters. It's that simple with God's loving grace in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, it's Lucas. You may remember me from last year from my National Junior Honor Society project where I did his OC with the bus passes. Okay, so if you remember that, I'm doing his OC again, but I'm doing the chess program where I'm at his OC, which stands for Combined Housing, Education, and Skills for Students. It's for men 18 to 24 that are looking to get out of homeless and further their education. These men are trying everything they can to succeed in life, but cooking can be on a completely different scale, and I want to help them by making a meal. My friends and family know that I'm not the best chef, and I don't like to eat that much, but I know cooking and food is important in life. So I'm going to be making them chicken tortilla soup. And you can also help out too. At the end of the video, there's going to be information on that. Uh, you can deliver them a meal, or you can have pizza delivered to them, or you can get them a restaurant gift card. I'll be back in five minutes to make this glorious soup. Tonight, I'm going to be making chicken tortilla soup for the chess program at his OC. I have all of my items prepped, so let's just get started. guacamole, chips and salsa, and brownies. So we're going to pack all of this stuff and head to the His OC house. So let's go! Chicken tortilla soup for you guys for dinner. Oh, that's cool. Oh. That's cool. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully you enjoy. Appreciate it, man. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed one. Thank you for watching my video on how to make my glorious chicken tortilla soup. I'm so happy that I got to make a meal for the boys at the Chess House from National Junior Honor Society Project. And if you would like to help, there will be an email address provided for you. And thank you for helping out his OC and the homeless in Orange County.
as we come to our offering time, just a brief reminder, a brief reminder that you can give to Messiah in a wide variety of ways. Online banking or our website, texting Messiah YL to the numbers on the screen, or writing a check to Messiah and leaving it in the offering plates on site or mailing or dropping it off at our office. Thank you for Thank you for your generous gifts to Messiah and for all that you do to live out our mission of loving God and loving one another. Let's pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, called a despised tax collector to become one of his apostles. Help us, like Matthew, respond to the life-changing call of Jesus Christ to follow him and to learn to do mercy. We praise you for all those who have served you and your church throughout its history, those through whom you have called your church and renewed our life together. We ask that you raise up today apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers inspired by your Holy Spirit, whose voices will strengthen our ministry and proclaim the presence of the kingdom of God for all those who need to hear the good news. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's join in the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let's sing our sending song. I saw simple light lightning. I saw darkness from for cover. Grace 
Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord with joy. Thanks be to God.